All right, look, the neighbor's yard looks like that. But your yard looks like this. There's a good chance you got a fungus. Maybe you weren't watering. But this customer was definitely watering. Um, so to me, it looks like the yard melts it out. It's hard to say though, because I'm late to the diagnosis. Melting out is actually a technical term, believe it or not. Um, it's a type of fungus, but you can get in here. If it'll, if it'll focus, you can see all the black specks even on the camera. There's fungus all over this uh, this grass. It's just covered in spores. So melting out primarily affects bluegrass. It doesn't affect our fescues too bad. Most of our yards are going to be a blend of fescue and bluegrass, right? Um, a lot of times it's like 90%, 95% fescue, um, specifically so we can avoid melting out. The problem is, is that in these new developments, they're all sodded, at least the front yards are sodded. Um, in this case, I believe the entire yard was sodded. And the sod farms, proportion of fescue to bluegrass isn't exactly the ideal mix anymore. I believe when they seeded it that it was, and that the sod farms have maybe just been growing for longer than intended or I'm not sure, but the bluegrass has taken over a good chunk of the sod. I've noticed that when we bring in sod, it's very likely that 50% of the sod is going to be bluegrass. Um, like I said, a healthy yard should be about 5 or 10% bluegrass. So seeing that much bluegrass in my yards, um, it's going to lead to disease problems like this. Bluegrass just isn't very drought tolerant and it's not very heat tolerant, um, especially not the varieties that they're using out there at the sod farms. Now, if they're using the Berenberg HGT bluegrass, I don't think you're going to see those problems. Um, but when a yard has that much damage, to me, it's really probably a good thing because let that bluegrass die and let's reseed it with some fescue and let's try and keep that fescue healthy and then long term that fescue should not need to be treated as much or it should not have as many problems with the heat and the drought. As much damage as they have at this point, they're probably going to need to aerate and overseed that because I'm sure that we won't be able to revive a lot of that grass. but. I think it will save a chunk and as long as they're on a preventative program for the future, I don't think they're going to have that issue anymore. Um, we've tried just doing a single treatment for them and this seems to be a recurring problem. So my guess is they have a very thin layer of topsoil. Um, it's in a newer development and a lot of those homes, they strip out the topsoil before they build the home. Then they sell you back the topsoil and when they sell it back to you, they only give you like two inches. Um, which really you probably want to have more like six inches of topsoil if you really want to have decent grass. Um, you can get away with four, but obviously the deeper your topsoil layer, the better off you're going to be. Plants with deep roots are going to be stronger plants and they're going to stand up better to insect and disease problems. A couple ways I like to make sure my plant roots grow deep is to um, limit the frequency of watering um, increase the volume of watering. Uh, when I plant, I do not amend the soil. I make sure that I refill the hole with native soil, which encourages the plant roots to stretch out into that soil. They don't get happy in that little spot of amended soil that you've made where you dug your hole and planted your planter tree. Um, and if you're doing those things, you know, you're breaking out your watering, you're, you're making your plants survive without water, um, then they're going to get deeper roots because they have to to survive. Now, if you're constantly watering those plants, you water every single day and you're never letting it, you know, and you never give it a need to stretch out for more water or to chase that water deeper, then you're never gonna get those wider, deeper roots that you're looking for. Being able to recognize a disease like that, um, especially when it's not happening to everybody else, uh, really is a great way to make an upsell and to keep a customer happy. Uh, the customers want to know why their yard doesn't look as good as the neighbors and if you have a reason for them and can do something to actually make it better and then you do something and it works uh, generally that's a win-win for everybody so uh, being able to identify these fungus problems and treat them appropriately is definitely a, a critical skill that 
pesticide applicators and lawn treatment techs need to have.